to recognize our sponsors because um, tonight is not possible without our sponsors and their generosity. Oh, before I forget, one more thing. I wanted to recognize and thank um, J.D. Wade Swift and two students from the Salem High School Interactive Media class. We are live streaming and on Facebook and YouTube. So we're, we're live. So well, let's thank them and also welcome all of, welcome all of our viewers out there in the county who couldn't be with us tonight. So let's welcome everybody. Now I'd like to recognize our sponsors. Um, again, without them we couldn't do this. So our Rembrandt sponsors, First Harrison Bank, First Savings Bank, Fourth Street Performance Partners, Dr. Richard Grassmeyer, H&R Block, Ivy Tech, Jason Wade State Farm, Jeans Extrusions, Covert Hawkins Architects, Leader Publishing, PNC, and Telemedia. Thanks to all of our Rembrandt sponsors. Our Picasso sponsors, Ace Hardware of Salem, Blue River Services, Steve Brewer CPA, the City of Salem, Duke Energy, David Morris with Edward Jones, Nat Miller Brown, Loyne Fordyce, and Mid Southern Savings Bank. So thanks to our Picasso sponsors. And finally, our Van Gogh sponsors, Center Credit Union and Mosier Family Chiropractic. So thanks to them. And I want to recognize and thank the committee that helped plan the meeting tonight, Linda Chastain, Jeanette Nolan, Janet Bowling, Rita Haub, and Eric Zink. So thanks to my committee for helping as well. And next, um, I want to take a few moments and recognize our retiring board members. So, you know, it's difficult to lose good board members, but we have a very talented, dedicated individuals who will be joining our board to replace them. Board transition is something that every organization faces, and the foundation has always been blessed to be able to recruit new board members with tremendous passion and dedication, and this year is no exception. You'll be hearing more about them in a minute, uh, but I'd like to ask Marvin Clark, Jeanette Nolan, Teresa Gottbrath, and Linda Chastain to come forward um, so we can recognize you for your board service. So while they're waking, working their way up here, um, instead of me saying a lot of wonderful things about these individuals, and I could do that and go on and on all night long, um, I asked them for their thoughts about serving on our board of directors, and I'm going to share with you what they had to say. I'm going to start with Drew Wright because he's not here. He had a work commitment tonight, so um, we'll start with him. And when I asked Drew what did he want me to say, he replied, well, just say what I always say every year when we introduce ourselves to the new board members. I'm a retread, having served on the board of directors from 1993 to 2001, and again from 2010 to now. They asked me to be on the board of directors because I know where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> Drew's words, verbatim. Well, that's not entirely true, but he has been wonderful to work with. Um, all told, he's given 18 years of uh, legal services to the Community Foundation, and when you think about it, that's about 25% of his lifetime. So I think that puts his commitment and dedication into perspective. It's, I hate it that he couldn't be here tonight. He hated that he couldn't be here tonight, but he just had something else that he had to go to, so. Next, I want to uh, share with you Marvin Clark's thoughts. Um, and his comments are, the foundation has been a great thing it has grown so much since I joined the Board of Directors nine years ago. The one thing that I have learned is that no matter how much people are able to give, large or small, it all adds up and it all makes a difference. The foundation, because of so many generous donors, has done and will continue to do great things. I enjoyed our 20th and 25th anniversary celebrations. In 2013, we celebrated our 20th anniversary by representing Washington County and placing a wreath on the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Last year we celebrated our 25th anniversary when we brought the Walnut Hills to Washington County and we also gave every fire department and law enforcement agency a grant to celebrate our local heroes. Like most people, before I joined the Board of Directors of the Foundation, I thought they were all about scholarships for high school students. I am grateful for the time I had on this board. It has taught me that the Washington County Community Foundation is so much more than that. 
I have been continually amazed at the breadth of activities and the services that the foundation provides. My biggest takeaway, if someone has a particular idea of how they want to get back to our community, the foundation can help them do that. For me, one of my favorite programs is Education Matters. This program helps adults with some college but no degree go back and complete. I have seen firsthand the impact this program has on families and I am proud that we were able to start that while I was on the board. The board of directors has great leadership and is positioned to take our community forward, constantly looking for ways to make Washington County a better place to live and raise a family. So thank you, Marvin, for nine years of service. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Teresa Gottbrath, um, Teresa states, I want to thank Rita Elliott for asking me to consider being on the board. After serving a three-year term, I feel more knowledgeable about the foundation and the, all that is done for the community. Probably one, thing, one of the many things I've enjoyed about the foundation is learning about the creative ways to leave a legacy. The positive relationship the foundation has with the community was also another factor for me to, do, to decide to serve. I found it an honor and privilege to be part of such a strong organization. It was amazing to learn about the different types of funds that affect such a wide range of the population. It has also been a great opportunity to be part of a way to grow our community. Another thing I really enjoyed about serving was being able to know such a visionary and professional board of directors. The organization is fortunate to have good leaders. I will continue to share the foundation's many opportunities, and I thank you for my opportunity to serve. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> Linda Chastain. Serving on the foundation board has enriched my life in so many ways. I never realized how much the foundation benefits Washington County through its programs and grants. I have met people throughout the county that I might never have met and renewed some old acquaintances. I have attended seminars and workshops that have expanded my horizon of thinking. As a lifelong educator, I have been especially touched by all the programs that enrich education. Our donors make it possible for children under the age of five to receive a free book every month in the mail. Our donors make it possible for adults with some college but no degree go back and complete. Our donors are now helping to expand quality preschool education throughout the county. Our donors are amazing. By working through the foundation, they are making life a better place in Washington County for all of us. It's been my honor to serve as a board member for the foundation. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> and last but not least, Jeanette Nolan. Serving on the board of directors for the Washington County Community Foundation has been a privilege and an honor. Reflecting on the past nine years brings to mind all of the great accomplishments we achieved as a board. It's very satisfying to know how much we have been a part of improving the community we live in. It's been a pleasure to serve with so many kind and thoughtful people over these past years. Sometimes we had to make some tough decisions, but it's always important to make the best decisions for our county. I would like to thank everyone that supported me during my endeavor as a director of the foundation, but most of all, I would like to say thank you to my husband, Tony, who has always been there for me no matter what. Also, I would like to share with you a very touching farewell that was written and read to us at our last board meeting by one of our current directors, Richard Grassmeyer. Now, I'm just going to step out for just a minute and just kind of put this into context. So at our last board meeting, which was in May, that was the last meeting that these uh, four individuals were going to be you know, board members and at a meeting. So the board members who are returning all just, you know, kind of had farewell wishes and reflected about their service and everything. But I think Richard's thoughts um, re reflect the mutual respect and fellowship that our board members have for each other and the bond that really holds our board together. So here is what Richard said at our last meeting. There's a universal truth we must all face, whether we want to or not and that is that everything eventually ends. I'm not always fond of endings, last day of summer, the final chapter of a great book, parting ways with a close friend, but endings are inevitable. Leaves fall, you close the book, you say goodbye. Today is one of those days for us. Today we say goodbye to our fellow board members and your unique perspectives, and much of that remains a part of us. You are our solid ground, our North Star, and the small, clear voices in our hearts that will be with us always. Thank you for your generous service. Aww. Aww. <laughs>
I'm telling you, there were tears flowing after that. I mean, there were tears flowing. But it was beautiful, but it just really helps you understand what it's like to be on our board and the bond that our board has. So I'm going to step back in with Jeanette's final comments. Thank you, Richard, for these beautiful parting words, which I will remember forever. And as I go on my way in life, accomplishing what I am able to, my motto will continue to be for good forever for Washington County. So please join me one more time in thanking Drew, Marvin, Jeanette, Linda, and Teresa for their years of service. Now I'd like to call to order the 26th annual meeting of our members. Our members are those individuals who paid dues within the last 12 months. The minutes of last year's meeting were available at the door, and I would entertain a motion to approve the 2018 annual meeting minutes. Karen and Danny. Karen and Danny. Um, all those in favor? Aye. All right. The minutes have been approved, and now I would like to introduce Tanya Dustin, who will present the treasurer's report. Oh, I've still got tears in my eyes from Richard's speech. Um, <laughs> Good evening. My name is Tanya Dustin, and I serve as treasurer of the Washington County Community Foundation. You have received your annual report, and I would like to provide a brief financial update on the foundation. If you look on page 7, as of December 31, 2018, our total assets were $21,371,251. This is a decrease from last year, as um, 2018 was not a good investment year for us. However, our 2019 investment return, <clears throat> as of June 30th, was 13.8%, so we have rebounded. The ups and downs of the market continue to be a challenge. Managing the Foundation's investments is something we take very seriously, and we value your trust in us. Our financial manager is 4th Street Performance Partners. They have a proven track record with endowment management and we are very pleased with their service. We're well diversified and the investment committee meets on a quarterly basis with our investment managers to assess um, and review our asset performance. We thank you for your unwavering support. On a weekly and monthly basis, we have key performance indicators we track and monitor. I would like to uh, highlight a few of those from 2018 now. In total, uh, we received $312,570 in donations. We started six new funds and we awarded uh, grants to organizations throughout the community of $546,899. So let me say that again. <laughs> we awarded over a half a million dollars in grants last year. That's, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah. <clears throat> you might be thinking that we don't need your donation, but that could be, not be further from the truth. We still have children and families that need our help. We have many issues that challenge us and in order for the county to improve, we have to get to the root causes of our community's greatest challenges. Yes, we very much need and appreciate your support. <clears throat> um, these are big numbers, and sometimes it's hard to get your mind around them, so I kind of like to tell you a little story to see how powerful your support is. 
our generous donors granted money to support the Backpack Buddy program. This program places food in the backpacks of students who are at risk of going hungry over the weekend. Um, this is done in a very unobtrusive way. The children don't know who receives food and who doesn't. So the first weekend of this past school year, a little third grade girl was getting on her bus to go home Friday afternoon. She stepped onto the first step of the school bus, turned around, and looked at her teacher who was standing on the sidewalk, raised her backpack up, and mouthed the words, thank you. That is, this is just an example of the very real way you are impacting lives in our county every day. I don't know about you, but that really touched my heart to think that um, <clears throat> a little third grade girl is thanking, thanking us for giving her food for the weekend. That's just amazing. Uh, your support is definitely appreciated. Again, the statement of financial position for the year ending 12-31-18 is on page seven of the annual report. Thank you for your support. You are making a huge difference in Washington County. Now we'll uh, return, now entertain a motion to approve the 2018 financial report. Jeanette, this for is motion. Do I have a second? Second from Rita. All in favor say aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion to approve the financial report passes. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to Danny Habermill, who will present the nominating committee recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. My name is Danny Habermill. I'm currently serving as the president of the Washington County Community Foundation Board of Directors. I will be delivering the nominating committee report. The Board of Directors of the Washington County Community Foundation consists of up to 18 volunteers. Each serves a three-year term. The terms rotate so that each year a third of the board is at the end of their term. The role of the nominating committee is to screen and recommend individuals for our board of directors, to our membership, and to our three appointing boards, which are the three school boards. In May, the following appointments were made to the school boards. East Washington School Board appointed Lisa Fleming, the Salem School Board appointed Karen Smedley, and the West Washington School Board appointed Sue Bennett. The nominating committee has prepared the following slate of board of members to serve a three-year term beginning July 1st, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2022. They are Betty Bennett and Karen Davis. I would entertain a motion from the membership to appoint these individuals to the Washington County Community Foundation Board of Directors. Okay. In a second. Second, Kayla. Okay. I uh, have a motion um, and second. All in favor, aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. To our newest board members in attendance tonight, Sue, Betty, Lisa, and Karen, let me be the first of many to welcome you to our board of directors. I'm confident that you will enjoy and grow from this experience. I'm looking forward to working with you. When I started on this board, I really didn't know what to expect, but I can tell you this board is like any other board, unlike any other board that I have served on, and I thoroughly enjoy our meetings. I'm amazed at the selflessness and the community spirit exhibited by all members. It is my honor to present to you the 2019-2020 Washington County Community Foundation Board of Directors. As I call your name, please stand. Matt Deaton, Danny Habermill, Kayla Sebold, Janet Bowling, Sue Bennett, 
Eric Zink, and he's out of town tonight. Lisa Fleming. Greg Hopkins, and he was unable to attend this evening. Karen Davis. Betty Bennett. Karen Smedley. Tanya Dustin. Rita Haub. Adam Kelly. Kim Cyphers. She had a work commitment this evening. Richard Grassmeyer. And Tom Hine. These individuals are all volunteers and receive no compensation. Let's all show them our appreciation for their commitment and hard work. Now I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Kayla Troutman. As you saw in the video we played during the reception, Kayla is the talented artist that painted the mural in our conference room. The mural is dedicated to the members of our Moore Society. These individuals have given back to our community through their estate plan. They are special people who had it in their hearts to make one last gift to our community through the foundation. And we believe that they will always deserve special recognition. You will see a complete list of our Moore Society members on page five of your annual report. Or better yet, stop by the Community Learning Center sometime and see the mural for yourself. It is truly a beautiful work of art. So please join me in welcoming Kayla to the podium. Hello. I spilled my drink as soon as I got here uh, this evening, so I'm going to be very careful with that. I made one entrance. I don't need to make two for the day. I want to start off by saying thank you for having me here. I move around a lot. I wonder if I can take that out. Or not. Never mind. Okay. I want to thank you for having me here and say thank you to Judy for inviting me on behalf of the board and begin uh, by telling you what an honor it is for me to be here. When uh, Judy first invited me, I'm going to dive right into the deep stuff, I told her that I didn't feel like I deserved to speak tonight wanted to know what qualifications did I have to be able to speak to you about accomplishing something with your life. I explained to Judy that when I graduated high school, uh, or when I graduated college, that I was actually very ashamed of myself because Washington County had done so much for me, and then instead of going out into the world and becoming some big fancy deal, I came back and I settled down. I married the man that I love, and I went to work for my parents. My job did not involve painting, which is what I went to college for and I didn't even have time to fit it in as a hobby in my spare time. So I felt like a failure. I felt like I had let everybody down, felt like I should do more, I should be more, and I owed it to the people who had seen so much potential in me and who had invested their time and their money in me to go out and do something big. But I also didn't want to do anything about it. I knew what I was capable of. I could go out and I could do a lot of things. I'm blessed to have a lot of talents. Um, poor Judy's story over there, it's not, not the case. I can sing, I can draw. Uh, so I had a lot of opportunity, uh, but all of the big dreams of this big life that had followed me around since elementary school had gotten old. Uh, they didn't fit me. And somewhere in that search, uh, somewhere in that effort to be what everybody else wanted me to be, I had lost my own goals in life, and I wasn't even sure that I could describe what success really meant to me. So I was miserable over it. Now let me tell you, that kind of speech will inspire people to drink. <laughs> But that's about the only thing I'm going to motivate you to do. So I'm going to leave you on a better note than that tonight, I promise. Uh, luckily for me, in the midst of all of this negativity, I returned to church. Now, I'm not out to give a sermon tonight, but I want you guys to know what that community of believers did for me. They helped change my point of view. And I'm very happy a lot of them are here tonight. That's exciting. When I showed up, they didn't care how many A's I made in high school or what scholarships had helped me get through college. They cared because I was a person. They cared because they wanted me to be a part of their lives. And so I quickly learned, or relearned, that my success was not measured by my accomplishments, but how I lived my life and what good I did with it. 
and it still amazes me how easily we complicate that, how easily we're distracted just by being busy, and we glorify being busy. There's a scripture in Matthew 22 that basically says, love God and love people, and it's that simple, or it's supposed to be. So that's how I measure my success now. My goal is to love God and to love people. So let's talk about how the Washington County Community Foundation helps me do that. Let's be honest with ourselves. I've heard some really good examples tonight. I don't want you to raise your hand, but how many of you actually know what the foundation does for this community? One of the board members said that they thought it was just scholarships and stuff. That was me. I knew that. I have good memories of being a part of the Youth Foundation. I've served these dinners before. Uh, we visited local schools. We raised funds for various projects. We did community service throughout uh, the area. And again, if pressed, I could tell you that they had funds and they had grants, and a lot of those went to high school students, but I really didn't know much beyond that. So I did a little digging. Did you know that the funds in the foundation not only help with scholarships for high school seniors, but they help fund the adult literacy programs that others have mentioned? They provide opportunities for adults who started but didn't finish their degrees to be able to complete those. There's leadership training for our residents. They're dedicated to the upkeep of local historical and community use sites like the Veterans Memorial, Beck's Mill, local churches and cemeteries, Riley's Park. They're used to empower senior citizens, to empower residents with physical challenges. They're used for the youth development, urban beautification, underprivileged outreach, food bank support, and then local programs benefit like the YMCA, the Humane Society, and 4-H, which I saw something the other day on Facebook, which makes it legit, right? That's how that works. And it said that one in 10 high school students think that hamburger is made of ham. <laughs> if that's true, we need the 4-H program more now than we ever did. <laughs> but seriously, all of that is just the tip of the iceberg. I scrolled through an endless number of grants and funds organized through the foundation. And they mentioned also uh, there are a lot of people who support the Touch Tomorrow funds, which are used for whatever is needed to help grow and develop Washington County and its residents. The foundation's goal is to help people in this community live a better quality of life, and there has never been a better time for that than now. Did you know that my generation is the very first to look for a place to live based on the quality of life instead of employment opportunities? That means that the people that are coming in care more about what we and our families can do here than we care how far we drive to work. So in truth, most of my generation has actually found ways to work from home doing freelance work because they value that freedom to make their own schedule so much, because they value being able to experience life while they can. We're a generation of YOLO, you only live once. <laughs> so if you love this county, the town where you grew up or you graduated high school or you started a business or you raised your babies, if you love it and you wanna see it thrive and grow, then this is the best opportunity that we've had yet. We may never host large factories or high rises, and to be honest, most of us wouldn't want to, but we can boast a small town atmosphere with endless arrays of activities and experience-based opportunities. With help from the foundation, we can create an environment where adults who struggle have the opportunity to thrive, where parents with small children can go out on almost any weekend and they can attend a workshop or a festival or some community volunteer event, and they can expose their children to new people and ideas and skills. We can create a fun, safe space for our youth to go after school. We can support both the college and the trade school-bound individuals during one of the hardest transitions in their lives. We can support the single mom and the down on their luck. We can provide activities and experiences for the newly retired and the long ago retired. And together, we can love people. We can make our lives count for something and help the future of this community by loving people through the foundation. Now is the time to invest in education, in painting parties, in music lessons, in festivals, in indoor and outdoor amenities, and other enriching events to draw in that next generation. Now is the time to capitalize on what we do best, a community of loving people. Now is the time when we get to build one another up and we create a space of belonging, a sense of belonging for anyone who just happens to be passing through so that once they're here, they don't want to leave. We have to be that supportive community where they know that they matter where they're free to figure out what success and happiness means to them in whatever stage of life that they happen to be going through. Judy hit the nail on the head with her story earlier. You don't have to paint or sing to be an artist, but you do have to contribute. The more society that I painted the mural for was established to recognize and thank members of this community who contribute. Those who care about its future and leave behind a gift through their will or their estate plan. 
and every person who becomes a Morris Society member has the opportunity to have their name added to the wall of that mural. And every gift, no matter how small, and every name behind that gift is a part of the bigger picture. And there are several members here tonight. You'll see them wearing a special little ribbon. And I want to thank them personally because it's been really exciting for me to see the names get added to that mural over the last several years. There's something fulfilling about watching your artwork expand beyond what you can do and overcome those limitations to become something even more awe-inspiring. So if you did watch the video, you can see freeze frame by freeze frame, one little move after another that adds up to this big picture. And you can see that it took hours for me to complete. And I knew from my experience as an artist that each layer of paint, each brushstroke, each color, each shape, all plays some part in the final picture. What my church taught me and reminded me is the same lesson, but with people. We're all in this together. Whether you need someone or someone else needs you, we're all a part of a bigger painting. We're blessed to have the Washington County Community Foundation to bring us all together. Through them, we can make individual marks and then we can watch it grow beyond us. We can fulfill our purpose of loving people and together create one cohesive work of art to benefit our community. The truth is we can all have ideas and good intentions in the world, but it's only talk until someone gets it started. I used to work at festivals and um, artists can be snobs sometimes if you didn't know. Uh, but I would go through and I'd say, oh, I like that pair of earrings or I like that painting. And I thought, oh, I could do that on my own, so I don't need to buy it. But the truth is you never go home and do it. So it's really true that you can have a lot of ideas, but until somebody helps you do it, it's just an idea. We're not going anywhere with it. You may have heard, a bell's not a bell until you ring it. A song's not a song until you sing it. Love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love until you give it away. And what that means is a bell is only a cold heap of metal until someone finds its purpose and rings it. And a song is only words and notes on a page until someone finds its purpose and sings it. And the purpose of love is to share it with others. In high school, I had a tin box that said, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. I had that figured out at 18. I knew that the happiness I found in helping others is what made my life complete. Somehow, I let the busyness get in the way and it let the world take that from me. And I wish I could go back and I could tell that 18-year-old to hold on to that spirit of life and to not get bogged down by what I accomplished for myself, but to remember that it's what I do for others that makes me a success. I wish I could go back and tell that 26-year-old and help her figure it out faster. And I'm blessed now at 31 to know it. Pablo Picasso said that the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. So no matter if you're 18 or you're 98, if you want to leave this life as a success, as someone who made a difference in this world, then you have to pass your blessings on to future generations. The Community Foundation can help us combine our efforts, our brush strokes, and make a masterpiece out of this place that we call home. The generosity of others and the impact that the Washington County Community Foundation is able to make with our gifts has inspired me to become a member of the Morris Society as well. And they gave me my own little ribbon. Yay! All those hours that I worked on the mural, it's funny because I never thought, never crossed my mind that someday I would be a member, but it's exciting to be able to make my brush stroke. My brush stroke may be small now, but as time goes on, it's going to grow. I would consider it an honor if you will help me, Judy, after this to make that happen. I encourage all of you to pick up your brushes with me. You may not be able to contribute a lot right now, and that's okay. The truth is, an artist's work is rarely worth anything until after they're not living. So, even though I can't make a killing from anything right now, someday this Kleenex might be worth millions. That's how that's going to work. <laughs> but what we plant today will grow. It's going to grow tomorrow through the foundation, and you're going to inspire others to join just by doing what you know is right. So if love isn't love until we give it away, then let's give that love to the future of this county, to the future of your family and your friends. It takes each of us to make a difference for all of us. Let's fulfill our purpose. Let's love people. Let's leave our mark on the world. Let's work together to create a masterpiece for our community. Thank you. to wing it <laughs> but let's um, join me in welcoming Kayla 
to the Morris Society, our newest member of the Morris Society. going crazy. All right. Um, I really didn't need this, but once again, thank you all for joining us tonight and supporting our foundation. With your support, we will continue to serve Washington County forever. And I'd like to report that the winning table over here is going to uh, recommend that the $1,000 be grant be placed in a Smedley Scholarship Fund at the foundation. So thank you for that. And remember, we do have an amazing grant opportunity, matching grant. The information's on your table. Give us $1, we'll match it with $2. That makes $3. That's great math. Um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you for, support, for supporting our community through the foundation. Thank you for attending. Please consider a gift through the Morris Society through your will or estate plan, just like Kayla. I promise you, future generations will love you for it. And please, drive safely on your way home. And thank you so much for joining us tonight.